Hi, and thank you for watching this video presentation of our ISPS 2020 paper on interim coordination during sprint acceleration. Acceleration performance is dependent on the athlete's ability to apply propulsive forces against the ground during the stance phase in order to accelerate the center of mass forwards. The orientation of this ground reaction force vector is affected by the position of the center of mass relative to the contact point. And this in turn is determined by the position and orientation of all of the body segments. A forward leaning trunk and placement of the foot directly below or behind the center of mass at contact are key kinematic features of good early acceleration performance. Typically, this is assessed in research and in coaching applications by analyzing the segment and joint positions at key instances, such as touchdown and toe off. A limitation of this approach is that a substantial amount of information about the motion of the athlete between those points is ignored. Alternatively, joint and segment kinematics has been presented as a time series, which provides a more complete assessment of the motion of that joint. However, it is difficult to interpret the relative motion of different segments from this data. Bilateral coordination of the reciprocal motion of the limbs is inherent to running, which you can observe in this example of sprint acceleration. While the stance phase is vital because this is when force application occurs, the preparation for contact is equally important and technical training emphasizes limb repositioning during the flight phase, sometimes referred to as leg switching by coaches. However, to date, no empirical research has examined how the limbs move relative to each other or whether this may be an important factor in sprint acceleration performance. So the aim of the study was to describe interlimb thigh coordination during early acceleration and investigate differences in coordination patterns between elite and sub-elite sprinters. 11 competitive sprinters took part in the study with five classified as elite based on 100 meter personal best times of less than 10.2 seconds for males and 11.2 seconds for females. Testing was conducted during a training session on an outdoor athletics track, where athletes first performed their regular warm-up, followed by three 30 meter maximum effort block starts, with at least five minute rest between efforts. The fastest of the three trials was included in the analysis. Athletes were instrumented with Noraxon Myomotion Triaxial Inertial Measurement Units, sampling at 200 Hertz with units placed on the lateral aspect of both thighs. And synchronized video was captured at 100 Hertz. Calibration was performed in a neutral upright standing posture, which established a zero degree orientation angle for the thigh segment. Sagittal plane deviation of the segment from this position was defined as positive in the direction of hip flexion. The instances of touchdown and toe off were determined from the video for the first four steps after the block phase. The sagittal plane thigh orientation angle was normalized to 101 data points from toe off to toe off of each step. The trailing and leading limb was designated at the start of each step. And this is an illustration of that for the first two steps where the right leg was designated as the leading limb in step one and became the trailing limb in step two. Coupling angles were calculated from the angle angle plots of the leading and trailing thigh at each time normalized data point. The coupling angles were classified into one of eight coordination patterns or bins and color coded in order to provide a visual representation of an individual's coordination profile. To quantify differences between the elite and sub-elite groups, a coupling angle difference score was calculated from the group means at each time point. The score would be zero if they were in the same coordination bin, one for adjacent bins, two or three for two or three bins difference, or four if they were in opposite bins. The sum of the coupling angle difference score 
from each time point was expressed as a percentage of 404, the maximum possible score for each step. The proportion of the step where the athlete was in an antiphase pattern was quantified as a percentage. In the first of our results, we take a look at the angle angle plots for each of the first four steps with the elite group shown here in black and the sub elite group in blue. The majority of the profile is a linear antiphase pattern where the leading limb is extending and the trailing limb is flexing. In the mid portion, which is during the stance phase, there is a more horizontal region. At the start and end of the step, around the time of toe off, there is a small vertical section. And these two deviations from antiphase pattern appear to be more prominent in the sub elite group. These are the coordination profiles for each individual athlete across the four steps. The dashed line separates the elite sprinters above and the sub elite sprinters below. Coincident with what we saw on the previous slide, the bright red antiphase pattern accounts for the majority of each step. The light green bands indicate a trailing positive pattern, which occurs just after contact in some athletes, where the swing thigh is flexing and the stance thigh is fixed. The darker red bands indicate a leading negative pattern, which we see in the latter part of the stance phase, where the stance thigh is extending while the swing thigh is fixed. The coupling angle difference score between the groups range from 2 to 3.7%. But this is influenced by the variations in timing of the different coordination patterns between individuals. If we look at the overall proportion of each step that was spent in an antiphase pattern, that's the proportion of the bright red coordination bins, the antiphase percentage was higher in the elite group than the sub-elite group for all steps with an effect size of up to 1.6 for step one. To summarize, the study found that elite sprinters spent relatively more time in an antiphase pattern than sub-elite athletes during early acceleration. The sub-elite athletes displayed more decoupling around the time of touchdown, where the start thigh was fixed while the swing thigh was flexing, and around toe off, where the swing thigh was fixed and the stance thigh extending. These results support the emphasis placed by coaches on the switching of the limbs or repositioning during the flight phase in preparation for contact. Our ongoing work in this area will examine coordination patterns across a larger sample of different athlete populations and investigate the relationship between coordination and acceleration performance as well as the influence of other movement constraints. This analysis approach is also proving to be useful in our applied work for individual technique assessment and monitoring. For example, athlete A here demonstrates a fairly linear pattern throughout, but there's a clear difference between step one and the rest of the steps. Athlete B on the other hand is very consistent across all steps but has a more pronounced decoupling in the mid portion and at both endpoints. And this type of analysis will support an individualized intervention approach. If you have any questions or would like to discuss this area of research and its application, please feel free to get in touch with me.